From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good Tuesday morning. It's 5.30. Welcome to Montana This Morning. I'm Victoria Hill. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. We also say a good Tuesday morning to our friend Miller coming to us from his home. Miller, how's it going over there? What's your sign say today? Today, it's a uh, have a terrific Tuesday. I'm having a terrific Tuesday. I really am. Are you, are you still dodging? Won't... You still dodging those bugs? Yeah. Well, my Fitbit won't sync. My <laughs> workstation computer wouldn't do anything for me this morning. Wouldn't work. And then a box elder bug landed on my eye on live TV. Play that violin because I'm waiting for. Oh, what 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 could possibly be next? I'm just ready. Just bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough about my 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 failures of the day. Let's talk about some weather. <laughs> Okay, let's take a live look at the Stockman Bank weather cam. Uh, uh, it, it's a nice start downtown. Just uh, some breezy conditions out there right now. We're at 26 here at the airport. I think a little cooler downtown around 25 or so. Winds out of the west at about 13 miles an hour. That is going to be our big story as we head in later today. Uh, the winds will really start to pick up. We'll tell you more about that with the main forecast coming up. As we start off this morning, Montana and uh, uh, northern Wyoming, we're looking at temperatures in the 20s, some 30s, even some teens to start your day. But you can see just basically breezy conditions right now. Those winds will start to kick up as we go along this afternoon. In some isolated spots uh, by tonight uh, through early tomorrow morning, we could see gusts up to about 80 miles an hour along the western foothill. So yeah, definitely high wind warnings will be in effect. Again, we'll tell you more about that with the main forecast coming up. A lot of sunshine today, so that's some good news. We're going to try to get up into the low 40s today. We didn't get there yesterday here in Billings, but with that sunshine trying to warm us up, we'll try to, we'll try to get there. And we're going to stay above average for the next few days. But once we get through this wind event, then we have snow and colder temperatures to talk about. So a bit of a seesaw there with the forecast, and we'll definitely take a look coming up. Victoria. Oh, sounds good. Thank you so much, Miller. Um, we'll, we'll power on and check in with you in just a few minutes. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Our top story this Tuesday morning, a new group of Yellowstone County residents are now eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. As local health leaders announced, they've reached phase 1B. Anyone 70 or older can now schedule an appointment to get vaccinated, and those 16 and older with high-risk medical conditions are also eligible. Between first responders, medical workers, and staff and residents at long-term care facilities, more than 6,000 people have been given round one of their shots. Local health officials say it's important to be patient during phase 1B because the supply is still limited. So at this point, each week we're going to we'll be putting out an, an announcement when when vaccine is available and how much and then people can sign up and self self schedule. What we hope is that over time we'll see some some settling and, and predictability with that vaccine flow so that we can schedule out farther than than just for the week. There is a link to schedule an appointment in this story on our website. However, all the slots for this week are filled up. Now we go to Helena, where one of Governor Greg Gianforte's top priority bills is moving forward out of the state Senate. The bill protects businesses against COVID-19 related lawsuits. It says anyone trying to collect damages related to virus transmission must prove a Montana business engaged in gross negligence, which is a higher than usual standard. It also extends to healthcare providers treating COVID-19 and those who manufacture products to help prevent the spread. The reality is a lot of these businesses have been out of business. They've had to shut down um, because they can't survive. So once they open, you know, the lawsuits could come flying. And this ensures protection from frivolous lawsuits. But one or two lawsuits could put somebody completely out. Senate Bill 65 now goes to the House and is expected to be approved there soon. The governor has said he will lift the statewide mask mandate once these protections are in place. The Montana House is considering two bills surrounding, surrounding transgendered youth in Montana. Hearings on House Bills 112 and 113 lasted over four hours yesterday. The first would require trans athletes to compete in sports as the gender they were born, meaning a trans woman would have to compete as a man. The other bill would make it illegal to give a child gender confirmation treatments such as hormone blockers. Opponents say the treatments are based on medical best practices and the state shouldn't block them. But supporters of this bill say minors aren't ready to decide on procedures that could have long-lasting impacts on their lives. It protects children. 
and only children from consequences that they do not know about and they should not be allowed to undergo until they are an adult and, and free to make free will choices. HB 113 would force courageous kids like my son who are living in pain and dysphoria to wait and suffer longer because they can't get the help they need. Making necessary medical care that trans kids rely on illegal does not protect them. No immediate action was taken on either bill yesterday. Turning now to the national headlines. Today is the last full day of President Trump's term in the White House. He's expected to spend it in office issuing pardons for up to 100 people. The president will also look to change some coronavirus travel restrictions. A White House official says the president is expected to lift the restrictions imposed on Brazil and much of Europe last spring. The change would go into effect on January 26, six days after President Trump leaves office. It's still unclear if incoming President Joe Biden will reverse the decision after his swearing in. President-elect Joe Biden will use his inauguration speech tomorrow to appeal to President Trump's supporters in a push for unity. 200,000 flags have been placed on the National Mall to represent the people unable to attend amid the coronavirus and security threats. All 25,000 troops who will be on hand have been vetted as some high-ranking officials feared an attack from the inside. The head of the the D.C. National Guard says the vetting process hasn't flagged any issues with these troops. And we'll have Inauguration Day coverage starting tomorrow at 5 a.m. At 6 o'clock, our broadcast will be interrupted by CBS this morning. But don't worry, you can change the channel over to the CW and we will continue our show there. Coverage is also available on the KTVQ streaming app and on our website. In nearly two weeks after a mob stormed the Capitol, authorities continue to arrest those involved. 22-year-old Riley Williams is charged with illegally entering the Capitol and disorderly conduct. Court documents show she stole a laptop from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office with plans to get the device into the hands of Russia's foreign intelligence.